Hello everybody, come on in. I want to talk to you very briefly about the urgency that I feel in my spirit right now. And I want to just unfold before you what the Lord revealed to me about Esther's plan. And I believe that God is doing something very, very unique right now in the realm of the spirit. For those that are listening, for those that are abiding, for those that are staying connected to the vine, for those that are actually positioned to hear from God, you will know this by the realm of the spirit. For those outside of that, it probably will be hard for you to understand. You won't feel any urgency whatsoever. You won't get it. You won't, you just won't get it. And so I am coming on and I'm really making a call for people to really begin to see God like never before. Um, I'm going to put a link up in the description very quickly. Esther had a plan. And let me tell you what I saw in the realm of the spirit. I saw an attack of the enemy, which it's not like this is brand new news, okay? This is not like it takes a rocket scientist or even a prophet to figure this one out. Anybody with two eyes can see that and know that, that there is an attack against the body of Christ and not only the body of Christ, but the bloodline of believers. There is an attack against the bloodline of believers. And so tonight I'm going to be breaking open what I'm calling Esther's plan. And I'm going to be teaching about this because I've seen the attack in the realm of the spirit, but God began to release to me divine insight. And I believe it is an urgent call now for the body of Christ, not next year, not when, you know, war is in the land and all this stuff. No, no, no. Now, now God is calling for us to really seek him like never before. Can I get an amen from somebody in the comments? So tell me in the comments if you have sensed an urgency, if you've been dreaming about things, dreams are increasing. Um, that's what the Lord showed me. I have this whole entire word written out that I'm going to release tonight in my core group um, for my students. And I want to make sure that I do it in the timing of the Lord, but I'm calling uh, for anybody that wants to be a part of that, we need to link arms. We do not need to break ranks. Somebody put that in the comments. We don't need to isolate. We don't need to get by ourselves. You don't need to just, well, forget the church. Forget this. They hurt me. They did this. I'm just going to do my own thing. Danger. Danger. That's a trap. It's a trap of the enemy. It comes straight from the demonic realm. I'm trying to pin a link, but this is like, it's just not working. It's so stupid. Why is this not working? Can somebody from my core group put the link of core group up in the comments so that I can at least uh, share with the people? All right, so let me just share with you what I have been hearing from the Lord. Oh my goodness, a whole bunch of things. When the Lord has been telling me um, about this uprising that is happening in the earth right now amongst women. And I am not saying that men are left out in any way, shape, or form. We need these godly men, absolutely. But for so long, women have been pushed to the back. Women have not really been um, people you would just be able to list off the top of your head, just brrr, list a whole bunch of women that you would say are pioneers of revival, incredible moves of God. You have one, two, three, four that you can think of, but God is absolutely pouring his spirit out in such an incredible way amongst women. These are not famous women. I mean, some are, but the majority are not. It's women who are seeking God, who are abiding in the vine, who are prayed up, they're fasted and their lamps are filled with oil. That could be a mama with two kids in her apartment and has 50 friends on Facebook and God will use her in her community to stir up revival. God is calling forth the intercessors right now. Intercessors, I am at this point, I'm begging you, get to your post. 
there is an urgency in the realm of the spirit. And just like we've seen in the, the story of Esther, where this diabolical plan came against the people of God. And oh my goodness, what blew my mind about this story, Lisa, is that the enemy was mad because somebody didn't bow and somebody didn't worship him. And he didn't just say, I'm going to just take out this one person. He said, I'm coming for the whole bloodline the whole bloodline and we see that right now it happened then in Esther's day and it's happening now the enemy is trying to kill out in any way that he can the bloodline of the believer you're prayed up you're fasting you're doing right and it's like all hell is breaking loose in your family though it's like your kids are acting crazy your, your extended family's doing all this wild stuff and you're just like, what is going on? Can I encourage you? A lot of you are looking like, God, what have I done? I've done something wrong. Mordecai didn't do anything wrong. He was standing up for righteousness and the enemy got mad. And I'm gonna release tonight in my class about Esther's plan. This plan is a multi, there's so many wonderful things that came. People just go, okay, she just did this one thing and she just went in there and the king, you know, held out the scepter and that was it. No, there was a whole bunch of things that began to happen. And when we really look at it and we break it open and ask the Holy Spirit to give us all the revelation that we need, he will. And God's been revealing this in the core group with the women that I've been teaching every single week. God's been speaking to us about what Esther said. And when Esther said, go gather, that was key number one. Go gather, get the people in unity. Go get the people together. There's too much fighting over here. There's too much disagreement about this and oh, we can't speak in tongues and we can't do the end of it. No, 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 gather together. We need unity. So everybody sees the end result, but they don't see the things that she began to do and put in place as the queen, as someone in leadership that began to take back what the enemy tried to steal. So I'm getting stirred up in the Holy Ghost. And so she began to call them together. Just a few sentences before that, she didn't even know if she could go in. I don't know if I can go in. I don't know. He ain't called on me in 30 days. If I go in, there's a decree. We're not supposed to go in. People can die if they go. All of this stuff that came from a place of rejection, came from a place of being an orphan, an orphan spirit, came from a place of not knowing her destiny, her calling. She had not even yet awakened to it. But oh, let me tell you what happens when you get around godly counsel. That's why I'm saying every woman that's on here, you need to be in the core group. Godly counsel for Mordecai came and he began to provoke her thought. He began to provoke that calling and activate that thing within her. That's why we need the body. You are not called to do this thing on your own. Stop isolating because you got hurt in church. I understand it hurt. I get it. I know I get that. You cannot move away from the body in this season. Do not break rank. Link arms. Push past how you feel, what they said, all the things. Do not break rank, my sister, my brother in Christ. And so Mordecai, he begins to stir her and he says, oh honey, don't think just because you're sitting up there in the palace looking cute and whatnot, that it's not coming for you too. And uh oh, that stirred her up. And then he said something that really just began to unfold and awaken destiny in her life. He said, if you remain silent, deliverance is going to come from another, but who knows? Maybe you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. I hear the Lord speaking to mothers right now. Listen to me. I, I, I'm not even talking about spiritual mothers. I'm talking about moms. I hear the Lord saying, you thought that you were nothing in the kingdom. You thought that because you didn't have a big platform that you had nothing to offer in the kingdom advancement. But the Lord is saying, you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And even you raising up your children is a divine kingdom assignment of great proportions. Don't think what you're doing is small. 
It's not small, mama. It's not small. You have purpose, you're essential, you're needed, you're vital right now for the move of God. For those of you that think you're too young, you think I'm just too young, I haven't gone to school for this, I haven't studied, I don't know all the one million demons on the list of demons to cast, I don't know this, I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean that you're counted out for ministry. There is a purpose and an incredible destiny on your life by God himself. And so he says to her, who knows, perhaps you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this, this moment right here in time. All of us were born on the day that we were born, living right now, watching this broadcast right now or the replay, whenever, because it is the divine timing of the Lord. You're not a mistake. You're not a oops. Come on, somebody. Your parents might have, they had no clue that there was a little bun in the oven, but God knew. And God is unfolding the Esther plan again to the earth. There's a formula. There's a method that she did. There were steps and keys that she followed out. And it wasn't just a one and done. It was a unified effort on behalf of the whole body. How many of you believe that God has called you for such a time as this and there has been an attack against what you are supposed to be doing? Let me know in the comments. I'm calling for the Esters in this season to arise. Why do you think that your assignment is small? Who are you to label it big or small? You do not have the mind of God. <laughs> you don't. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are higher than ours. Come on. We cannot question the potter. We're the clay. Any assignment that he gives is incredible. It's a privilege. It's an honor. How many of you believe that? Amen. Come on. And so I'm calling for the women of God tonight. I'm going to be teaching. Let me tell you what happens in our classes. When I begin to teach, it's nothing that I'm doing per se that causes this to happen. It is literally by the Lord coming in. I will be teaching just like I'm talking now. I'm not casting any devils out. You don't hear me saying any of that. But all of a sudden in class, Students go through deliverance. Why? Well, let me take you back to the Word of God for that. The Word of God says, and you will know the truth. And the truth will, it doesn't say set you free. It says the truth will make you free. Make you free. The truth, you'll know it. Ding, click, and then it will make you free. And so naturally people are going through deliverance. It's also the mantle that's on the core group because it's on my life coming out of witchcraft, coming out of doing spells and incantations and doing all of this a new age magic sorcery, the, the worst vile things that you could imagine. Cutting myself, letting blood go on. I mean, I, when I tell you I was in the deepest, darkest place and when God ripped me out, he didn't do it just because he just wanted me to be okay even though he does he loves me so much but there was a greater purpose it was so that I could look back and go now I gotta get my sister out now I gotta go back and get my sister girl over here come on somebody and brother man over here in Jesus mighty name and so that's resting on the core group people sign up and they just testify they say I didn't even get to a lesson and I was getting delivered in my kitchen God's radical Revival fire is being poured out. What are what are we what are we looking for? What else? What are, what are we looking for? Why do we keep looking? Like when is it? When is it? When is it coming? When is it coming? When it's here and we don't even recognize it. Do you not perceive that it's already sprung up? For it's here now. So I'm encouraging the women on here. I do this every single week because it's 
It's the mandate. It's the assignment on my life right now. God said, train them up, raise them up, pour out, serve, do what you can. All the days of my life, this is what I will be doing. And so if you're not in the core group, I'm encouraging you to be a part of it. Tonight's class, you can still get in it. Uh, the link is in, you know what, if it's not here on Instagram, it's in my bio. Just go to JennyWeaverWorships.com. Sign up for the core group school. It's a school. It's a school. It's a school. It's a school. And you're going to get trained. You're going to get connected. And God is raising up women. Oh my goodness. All over the world. Women that thought, I'm nothing, are now going. The devil is a liar. I'm an overcomer. Actually, I'm more than an overcomer. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so, yes, it's a school. And you get mental health classes. Come on, we want wholeness in the whole person. There's mental health classes. We have class on Tuesday night with me. Tomorrow, we're going to have devotion and live prayer, Zoom, and all the things that we have. We have three different platforms that we stream from. It's incredible, just an incredible community. We have once a month core meetups. There's about 350 houses that are open all over the world right now. We just started this. And there's already 350 core meetup homes. That's just for fellowship. The main thing about the core group is a virtual training. Fridays, we have uh, just all kinds of things. Either it's coordinations for all our international students. We have tons of students in Australia, tons in the UK. We have students in South Africa. We have students in Japan right now. We have, we have students all over. Uh, and then we also have testimony night where we, we give the devil a black eye. We really give him a black eye and we testify because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony and that we love not our own lives even unto death. And so we adhere to that and we know we can overcome if we continue to share our testimony and it's not embarrassing and it's not like, oh, they're going to judge me or, oh, they think I'm trying to get attention. Tell the devil to shut up because he's a liar. That's not the reason you're testifying to give God glory in Jesus name. And then Saturdays we have Freedom Broadcast and uh, it's just an amazing, amazing training center. We have core marriages coming in um, August. Me and my husband are actually going to be teaching that class together. We have core singles coming in September. We have a core retreat in Orlando coming in October. Come on somebody in here. And then we have mass evangelism that is kicking off this weekend and it's going to be core hits the streets and we are going to be hitting the streets in every single state this is crazy it's just a massive outreach to the community and you're going to see cities totally shaken for the glory of god it can be done who will believe with me that god is going to restore all that the enemy has stolen who will believe with me that God will, resent, God will send revival to your city? Yes, your city. The same city that you said was dead and dry and there was no prophetic and there was no spirit there. The same city that you technically came into alignment with a word curse over. That same city, we decree and we declare that every word curse is canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. And there shall be a move of God. For there still is a remnant in the earth. Come on, somebody, if you believe that you're a part of that remnant, why don't you just put up an emoji hand? Why don't you just shout me down in the comments? Say, that's me. I'm on fire. I want to be used of God. Come on, God, if you're doing something in the earth, don't you dare do it without me. You got to take me along, Papa. You can't leave me out, God. I want to be right there by your side. So, again, get in the core group. Men of God on here. Let me talk to the men of God. Men of God. Men of God. People always ask me, well, can I get in a man of God? We're praying for you every day. We are praying for you every day. 
At noon, thousands of women pray for the men of God. It's powerful. But if you are a guy on here, you're a gentleman, you're a man of God, and you say, you know what? I'm on fire and I have some women in my life that I know that they are called, they have an incredible destiny on their life. My mom, my sister, my friend over here, the sister in the choir, the one sister girl that sits behind you in church. Listen, let them know what's going on in the core group. It is a movement. It is a movement. It is a movement, seriously. It's spreading out across the earth, organically happening. It started in April and it's just, it's like this where I once was able to keep up with how many, how it's growing and what's going on. It's, it's just like a wildfire. It's amazing. People are going through deliverance. Um, one of the students said she went to Starbucks and she was getting her coffee with another sister and began to go through deliverance in Starbucks, had to get out of Starbucks to go home and finish the deliverance. Like things are breaking out all over. Why? Because God, is getting us ready we are in preparation time right now it's amazing um, any Utah woman on, and someone said any Utah women on fire I bet you there are are there any there's core meetups in every state so people always ask me is there one here is there one there was one there if I knew all 350 by heart like every single city I pretty much would consider myself a genius status at this point but I don't know that that's way too much <laughs> I don't even remember a password that I created five years ago and I've been using it every day since I still forget it so surely I don't know every single city but don't ask every single city don't even ask that question and just know that there are core meetups in every state but listen that is not the core group the core group is a virtual training and equipping center. It's done online, okay? It's done online. The bonus is in the event that you did want to connect with sisters once a month, you can go and they have the, you know, the meetups and you can meet people. So, but that's not the core group. I just want you to know that because people go, oh, I want to join, but I don't know if there's a core group near me. It, there is one near you. It's all virtual. It's all virtual. Why are y'all still asking when I said don't ask? <laughs> I'm like, hello, is it lagging behind? What's going on here? <laughs> you just want to make sure, sure, huh? Need that extra confirmation. Um, but yes, there are a lot of there are a lot of core students and they're on fire and they will love you. They will love you, they will love you. Well, we are experiencing the book of Acts, the Acts Church. And I'm going to talk about that tonight with the students. I'm going to talk about the difference between the American church now and the real church that the Bible talks about. Those two look totally different. And I mean totally different. And so I'm going to be preparing the students to embrace the actual real church the way that God designed it. And it's going to take some work because when you've gone to regular Americanized church for 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, sometimes you just got to get that up out of you. Not saying that we stop going to church, not saying that we forsake the gathering and the saints. We don't want to do that. We want to stay connected. We love that. We went on fire churches by any means possible. But we do need to understand the way that the Lord set things up and the way that man set things up, they are two different things. And I don't know about you, but I don't care if every single church in America is going one way. If it ain't the way that God said, we got to get back to what he said. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't bother me if it ruffles feathers. It doesn't bother me if people say, well, we didn't do it like that in my church. I know that's the problem. Yeah. So, I hope to see you in class tonight. I love you so much. Can't wait to get to know you. I love you already. Even if you're not in it and you're on here and you're listening, I still love you. You're amazing. And I thank God for your support. If you are supporting, if you're not and you're being mean, 
I still love you. <laughs> I still pray for you. You can't help it. Got to get that deliverance. Then you'll be all right. God bless you too. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, well, I guess I could ask a question. Uh, do you all have any questions? Like one, two, very in the in the topic now. <laughs> Don't ask me. Do aliens exist? You know all this <laughs> strange stuff. In the topic, stay focused. I'm gonna teach a, a Facebook etiquette class or social media etiquette class about getting on the live and staying focused to the topic of the live. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any questions? Someone said, I love you. I love you too. Thank you for loving me. You're hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Someone said, what about Canada? Do you have a group? Yes. But remember, it doesn't matter if there's a group physically or not. It's virtual. Say this with me. It's virtual. Type it in the comments. It's virtual. It's virtual. It's virtual. It's virtual. How do you join? Um, it was a link, but you can go to JennyWeaverWorships.com. Someone said she makes sure we stay on topic. <laughs> you know why? Because if you guys get off topic, I'm going there too. I need your help. That's why I'm saying it. You go off topic, I'm going to be further off topic than you are. It's just how my brain works. It's virtual. It is virtual. Look at all the people writing. It's virtual. I didn't see a question. So. I didn't see a question. So, I guess I'll see you in class. Have an amazing night. Bye-bye.